it might be over for Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers has always been a polarizing figure in the NFL. Throughout his career, he has been one of the most talented quarterbacks to ever play. After leaving the Packers and joining the New York Jets, many wondered if Rodgers still had it, what it takes to lead a team to the championship. Was he still the ta elite talent that could push this roster over the edge, or was his best years of football behind him? After a shaky preseason and some disappointing early season moments, that question seemed more relevant than ever. The Jets made some significant moves in the offseason to go all in on Rodgers, bringing in players like wide receiver Alan Lazard, who had already built chemistry with Rodgers in Green Bay, and pairing them with offensive stars like Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall. The Jets' defense was also seen as one of the best in the league, giving the team what seemed like all the pieces to make a deep playoff run. Expectations were high in New York, however, after starting the season 2-3, and three, it's clear that things haven't exactly gone according to plan. Week 1's game against the San Francisco 49ers saw Rodgers struggling to find his rhythm. He threw for just 167 yards with a touchdown and one interception and the Jets fell short 32-19. to It was a tough loss, but many excused it as a season opener against a strong 49ers team with the belief that Rodgers and the Jets would bounce back. Week 2, however, raised more red flags. Luckily for my fantasy team, Brees Hall had a pretty good day in a critical game against the Tennessee Titans. But Rodgers was only decent, putting up 176 yards, 2 touchdowns, and 0 interceptions contributing to 24 to 17 win. This was a good win, but Aaron Rodgers looked a little hesitant in the pocket. By week three, facing a, the New England Patriots, the pressure was mounting on Rodgers to perform. He managed to throw for 281 yards and two touchdowns. The Jets won 24 to three in a performance that put a lot of confidence in Jet fans. Week four did not go as well against a mediocre Broncos defense where Aaron Rodgers threw for 225 yards, zero touchdowns, and zero turnovers, leading his team to a low score 9-10 loss. And then came one of the worst games for Rodgers against the Vikings in London. Rodgers was now in front of the entire world and failed to perform well, throwing for 244 yards, two touchdowns, but three interceptions, with one of them coming in the last drive of the game when the Jets had a good chance to win. Not only did he throw a pick on that drive, but also missed a wide open receiver for what would have been a touchdown to walk off the game. What makes this situation even worse is the performance of quarterbacks who were overlooked when the Jets were after Rodgers. One example is Kirk Cousins, who is off to a strong start with the Atlanta Falcons. Cousins has been quietly putting up impressive numbers, thrown for almost 1,600 yards nine touchdowns and five interceptions in his first six games. He's led the Falcons to a 4-2 record, consistently making smart decisions and avoiding costly mistakes. Cousins isn't known for being flashy, but his steady, reliable play has been sharp contrast to Rodgers' struggles, making some Jets fans question whether the team made the right move by banking on Rodgers. The clock is ticking for Rodgers, with a 2-3 and three record and frustration mounting in the locker room and among fans. He doesn't have a wall to prove that he can still be an elite quarterback. If Rodgers can't turn things around quickly, the calls for a younger option or at least a reevaluation of the team's quarterback situation will grow louder. That's all for me. If you want to support the channel, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you next time on the 2-6 Podcast.